Hello everyone, in this video, step 6, sub C video, we will discuss how can we set up the control loop in MATLAB Simulink. In the previous video, we discussed how can we transfer a S domain transfer function to a Z domain transfer function with a setting sample time. And in this video, we will set up the control loop and then we will import or type in the Z transfer function inside this uh, Simulink and uh, let the MATLAB Simulink run as a simulated process model. The communication between the PLC and the MATLAB Simulink, we will use some OPC UA. We will discuss how can we set up the OPC UA in the PLC and the MATLAB side in the following videos. But in this video, we will mainly talk about how can we set up the control loop inside this uh, MATLAB Simulink. Okay, let's go to the home and uh, click this uh, Simulink. Open the Simulink platform. And from here, let's click this uh, blank model. And let's set up a new blank Simulink. Okay, so firstly, we can save this project. Name it Simulink Process Loop OPC UA. Click the save. So firstly, let's implement this uh, process model. So to use this uh, process model into the MATLAB Simulink, we need to use click this uh, library. Click this uh, library and then let's go to the disk create. Let's search transfer. So let's search transfer function and then let's drag this disk create the transfer function. Drag to here. Okay, after this, we need to type in this uh, transfer function into this block. So let's double click, open this uh, discrete transfer function. And from this uh, numerator, so we will type in those numbers here. So follow this uh, sequence from the left to right. So the first value that is a uh, minus 0 0.0005394. Okay, space. The next value that is a minus 0 0.0005048. Okay, and then let's go to the denominator from left to right. Okay, the first one that is a 1. The next one that is a minus 1.816. Next value that is a minus 1.816. 1.816 and then space the third value 0 0.8196 okay so we type in the same number from this uh, transfer function that is a z mode transfer function so we manually type in those parameters that is a discrete time transfer function and for the initial states we can set zero or according to your process Okay, and this is sample time that is very important. This is sample time when we convert our continuous time transfer function into our discrete time transfer function, we used sample time that is a 0 0.5. So from here, we can type in the same number as our sample time, that is a TS here. Okay, so basically we finish the type in of this uh, discrete transfer function. Click OK. All right, after this, we can type in the comments here. So this is a discrete transfer function. So, so we can type in some comments here. This transfer function come from the S domain transfer function with this case. Okay, this is just a comment here. Okay, so this is our process object. Other than this, we need to build up that control loop and that controller the data come from the OPC UE. So the next things we will build up the OPC UE. Let's click this. And uh, let's search MATLAB function. We will use one MATLAB function to set up the OPC UE client function. So we will use this MATLAB function to call one function from the MATLAB. And the MATLAB function plays a role to communicate 
with the OPC UA server. So we will use this block to call one function, and that function will run as an OPC UA client. That OPC UA client communicates with the PLC OPC UA server. So we will drag this uh, interpreted MATLAB function. Okay, so inside here, we will call one MATLAB function. Okay, so firstly, I will rename this interpreted MATLAB function. That is a OPC UA client. That is our PID controller. That is a OPC UA client communicate the PID controller. That controller is an OPC UA server. Currently, we haven't set up this uh, DOM. That DOM run as an OPC client. So we haven't set up yet. In the next coming videos, I will discuss this uh, DOM file. Let's build up this uh, whole loop at first. And after this, we need to drag another important uh, block. That allows this uh, MATLAB OPC UA to communicate with the server in real time. So let's call OPC config. So let's search OPC config. Okay, let's drag this block. So let's double click this OPC config in real time. We do not need to config anything from this OPC configuration. We just need to call this uh, block inside the MATLAB symlink because we need to use this function to activate the real-time communication. And from here, we will see basically this block will run as a PID controller. That data come from the PLC. And then we will give the control signal to this uh, process model. And this process model will give a feedback to this uh, controller. This is the, the over picture of this uh, simulated uh, control loop. So this OPC UA function block can communicate with the PLC PID controller. And this process model will run as a simulated process. Okay, let's build up the next things. Build up this uh, control loop. So let's search uh, add. So let's search add and drag this add here. Okay, this control, this is the control signal. Go to here and this result go to the model. Okay, and then let's drag a constant. and drag this constant here and connect here. So the reason why I put a constant here, as we know, basically the model which come from our process and identified from the actual process. As we know, if you need to identify one process model, basically that model will be identified while the process is walking around is a operating point. So that means we need to record at that moment around the operating point what the output initial status and the process initial status. Usually I will call that a U00 and a Y00. For this process, when I identify this process model, at that moment, the control signal that U00, that is a 25. That means a 25% control command. So I will type in 25 here. That sample time, that is a TS, we will use the same sample time. Click OK. And uh, this plus, I will change to the minus. OK. Regarding the model output, we will add that uh, initial status of the process value. So that means we need uh, another add module here. But this time, we need to add that uh, operating point. OK. I will use another constant input. Connect here. 
and uh, in this process, so while the system working around is a uh, operating point, so the temperature value that is a uh, 43 centigrade. So from this uh, model output, we need to add this uh, operating point 43 centigrade to the results. Let me add the commas so we can name this that is a u00 operating point value and uh, this that is a y00 okay so drag here and this output that is a final process value and then this process value will go back to this uh, PID but uh, in actual case, this feedback, that means a one sensor signal. Basically, at least it will take a one sample time delay. So usually we will put one delay here. So I will delete this and put in another block here. Let's put a delay. Let's search delay. Double click this block. So that delay, at least one sample time delay. So we will type in the one. And this sample time, we will type in TS. So that is the same sample time. Okay, so we will give uh, one delay, that sample time, that is a TS here. Let's hit the okay. And so the output will give to the input of this delay. And the output of this delay will go to the PID feedback. So this basically demonstrate the sensor signal that delayed one cycle time from this loop. Because the left side, that is the input, right side, that is the output, we need to flip it, make it look better. So we can right click, select this uh, rotate and the flip, can flip the block. So it looks nice. This right side will become an input. Left side will become the output of this delay. Basically, till here, we we'll finish this uh, control loop. Okay, we will see from the PID control, it minus that uh, operating point value, and then this uh, control signal go to the process model. And uh, from this output of the model, it adds this uh, operating point value, and then give the feedback to the PID controller. And other than this, we can put uh, one scope. This scope allows us to monitor the process value. Okay, so we can scope. We can search a scope and drag the scope here. All right, to allow this scope monitor the control signal and the output signal, we need to use another function that named uh, MUX. Okay, let's use this MUX. So this give a signal. And then let's connect this uh, process output, go to this uh, second channel. Okay, and our control signal will go to the first channel. So let's connect this and connect this. So this allows this scope monitor the control signal as well as the process value feedback signal. And let's double click this uh, MUX. So you will see the current number of the input that is a two. Okay. So we set up the scope and other than this, we can also add a one disturbance input. Firstly, we can add a one channel at this add here. So we can add a class. Firstly, I will move this channel down and move this channel to here. Okay. And then let's add a one constant. Let's add a one constant. Okay, and then connect this constant to here. So this type in value will run as a disturbance. Disturbance. Okay. 
double click. The symbol time is the same, that is a TS. And this is a constant value by default, we can type in zero. Okay. And uh, personally, I would prefer use another slide function. That slide allows us to drag that uh, slide to change this uh, disturbance value. So I will search that slide. Okay, drag this uh, slide here. Once you drag this uh, slide, it will ask us to drag this uh, value to this uh, slide. So this allows to this slide to connect to this disturbance. So click this and click this. And then click this. This slide will connect to this disturbance value, which is here. Okay, hit enter. Okay, this. And then let's double click this slide because that is a disturbance value. Basically, this whole range is too big. We can double click and set a minimum, maybe just a minus five because that is a temperature process. So the maximum we can set a five. Okay, linearize. So when the system is running, so we can drag this slide to give a disturbance here. By default, that is a zero. Till here, we finish the essential settings for this control loop. This is a very typical control loop. We have a PID controller. That control signal and the feedback will communicate through the OPC UE. We have a process model. Also, we have a disturbance input. We have a feedback and this delay and uh, this scope here. And if your process has a delay, we can also type in the delay block here. That depends on your process behavior. Okay. And then let's keep the save. Till this step, we basically finish the structure of this uh, control loop. But we haven't uh, totally finished yet because this uh, interpreted MATLAB function, we need to call one MATLAB function. That OPC function will play the role as a OPC UA client to communicate with the OPC UA server. In this case, the OPC server that is a Siemens S7-1200 PLC and the PID controller PID underscore compact function block is running in that PLC. I will use the following two videos to show how can we implement this. I will use the next video to show how can we enable the OPC UA server function inside the S7-1200 PLC controller. And then after that, in the PID 16E, I will show how can we implement the one script running as an OPC UA client running inside the MATLAB. And that is a .m file. And then using this interpreted MATLAB function to call this .m file, allows this MATLAB running as an OPC UA server to communicate or exchange the data between the PLC and the MATLAB simulink. All right. So, see you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.